Hello again, awesomers. It's me. It's your old buddy, Steve Simonson. And guess what I'm doing? Yes, it's true. I'm doing another uh, podcast. And uh, against all odds, somebody has booked my entire day of podcasts. And uh, I will get you, Melissa. I will get you. Uh, so I'm super excited because I now get to do something I love and, and break mo the monotony of my normal days and talk to awesomers around the world. And today certainly is no exception. Uh, let me get everybody to say hello to Melanie Shabangu Katsari. That's the name I'm going with. Yeah, very great. Hi there. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me today. I'm super excited <laughs> to have you. And Melanie, you're you're with Avaska Counting uh, over there. And if I'm not mistaken, you're in England right now, yes? That's right. I am in the greatest of Britain. <laughs> ah, that's right. It's not the lesser Britain. It's the Great Britain. Okay, good. The Great Britain. That's right. <laughs> Very happy to know that. And uh, so let's, first of all, give me a little background. We're going to talk today about the, the, the big picture of, of people trying to expand to Europe and the challenges they face. But let's get a little back, background on you. Uh, how long have you been over at Avask and, and how long have you been kind of dealing with the, the nutty world of Amazon sellers? Okay, so I've been with Avask for close to coming up eight years in a few months. And we've been working with Amazon sellers for the past six years and very closely with Amazon as well in the past six years. Wow. So, and, and because Avask is an accounting type of firm, does that mean you love accounting? I do love accounting, but I would say I love tax more. Tax is more oh, interesting geez. because I am un I'm, I'm the unpaid tax collector for the government. And also, I help my clients to make sure that they pay the right amount of tax. So, yeah. yeah. That is that is a challenge, right? So, first of all, as if accounting, but by the way, most entrepreneurs, they're like accounting, uh, right? They're already holding their head. And then you switch into taxes, and that is like the full-on headache. I mean, no uh, no <laughs> entrepreneur loves uh, taxes. So, you're, you're actually there to make life easier for us and to make sure that what is supposed to be paid gets paid. Is that, that fair to say? That's correct. That's correct. So what, what we normally say as people that, are, uh, that do tax is that we want uh, people to pay the lowest amount of tax using legal strategies. So we don't want you to pay more tax than somebody else, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are using legal strategies to execute the paying of less tax so that we do not uh, become fraudulent or we pay the government the wrong amount. We want to make sure that we pay the right amount, but as little as possible if we are being strategic. Yeah, no, that's very smart. And really the objective of any awesome or any entrepreneur around the world should be to pay the right amount of tax. No more, Correct. no less, right? Certainly no Correct. more. Correct. But if you pay less, then that's, that's more of a problem because the tax man, listen, there's an old saying that, uh, you know, death and taxes, you, you shouldn't cheat either one because it won't work, right? And so we may as well just get on board and get it right. That's right. That's right. That's it. You pay the right amount of tax. It doesn't matter. If you become a multimillionaire in the future, nobody will ever worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Having the, the shadow of the tax man following behind you is a terrible feeling. So let's, let's frame up the, the typical problem that somebody with uh, approaches a VASC accounting and, uh, and they, what is their typical situation? Help us lay some context in here. Why are they calling Avask in the first place? So typically the people that we work with, uh, these two types of our clients, these are the brick and mortar ones that uh, they've incorporated a business. They are looking to get their financials done. They are looking to make sure that they, pull, they, they, they collect uh, or they pay the correct amount of taxes to the tax authorities. We, we deal with that. Then there's the uh, online seller. The online seller, they, took, they also come in two forms. There is this one that's coming through from America and he's looking to expand their business over into the EU. They don't know where to start. The fact that you're telling me that I need to expand into Europe is like, oh my God. Thinking of the IRS in the US and the States and how tax is complex in the US, they just think that same applies with Europe. Everything is very, very complicated. So what I always say to sellers like, I make the complicated simple. 
So yes. leave the complex stuff to me, and then I will make sure that your global expansion is as easier as, as possible. This, this really is the, the, the solid days of crossing borders. So when, when an entrepreneur thinks about, you know, what is it going to take for me to go from America to England or go from Australia to England or whatever to sell on the UK and presumably expanding into Europe? We'll talk about that here in a minute. It used to be so much more complex, right? We used to have to set up a, a, a distribution location and we had to have kind of all this logistic and all this pain. But now Amazon takes a, a bunch of the logistical pain and then you take a bunch of the financial tax compliance pain. Is that fair to say? That's correct. That's correct. S -s Sorry about that. Oh, look at that. The hotline's already burning up. I have got somebody calling me at this line. If the awesomers could just wait until we're done with the episode before they swamp your phones, that would be helpful. And, and, and that's a U.S. number. Well, I will uh, tell you that I actually have a guy in the back making prank calls. Just Dona, it's not going to disturb us anymore. That's okay. I've, 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 I've fixed the problem. I like it. Just a little scissors. Cut the line. I like it. Uh, That's okay, right. So, the, the, once we, so the framing the problem is we have either uh, compliance anxiety or we have the, the concern of, you know, am I ready to expand? And you guys can help eliminate that at a Basque. Uh, tell us how people fix the problem. So once we understand the problem, which is expanding, let's just say, from the U.S. into uh, Europe, how do you guys go about fixing the problem? What, what's a typical solution? So uh, for us, how we do is, so when you coming along the way, or you want, you're looking to launch in Europe, you're either going to be launched by Amazon or you're going to be making sure that you take those steps yourself. Whichever channel that you use, we will make sure that if you reach out to us, we will ensure, number one, we're going to be looking at your inventory that you're going to be shipping over into Europe. We will advise you in terms of like the shipping company that you could use that works closely with Amazon as well, as well as uh, ourselves. So you've got your shipping. But also most importantly is that before you do or you think of any shipping, you need to ensure that you've got a VAT number, which is uh, stands for value added tax. Once you've got that, we've got also an ERI number, which is an economic number that you use for shipping your products over into Europe. Now, you could use any shipping company that is out there, but one thing that we always say is that if you're using a reputable company that knows where Amazon has got fulfillment centers and how to carry out your shipment, that's gonna be easier. Because one of, I would say, one of the challenges that we saw at earlier days is that when sellers were shipping, they were shipping to our offices right so who is the importer of records that's a vask so melanie you've got a 40 foot container outside it's delivering loads of pallets for you i didn't order anything so that's mistake number one now what we do we make sure that we guide the sellers with the paperwork now if they're going to be relying on a shipping company the shipping company the seller is going to be talking about Avask and the ship, they're going to be asking, where's Avask address? They give them the, the address where we are. And that's why we're going to be getting the parcels instead of making sure that actually there is a difference to the person that's helping with the shipment and getting my documentation to the one that's going to be receiving my products, which is Amazon fulfillment centers. So I would say that that used to be a huge confusion. But again, these are the things that we guide sellers on. So if we had, um, I would say, we don't just talk about taxes only. We talk about launching you into Europe, the things that you need to look out for before you even ship the products, even down to you advising you as to which companies that, that could help you with your language localization instead of you using uh, a Google Translate, which is something that we used to see it a lot. Now, people would launch their products. The product is in Europe. It's not selling. Why is the product not selling? Because you've used Google Translate. It just makes no sense. Why? Because American English is different to the English, British English. And you've got Germany, you've got France, you've got Italy. Now, if you use, I know that Google has, has actually improved over the years, but if you use to a, as a translation tool to those languages, you're not going to do well, definitely. So this is where the advisory comes from, that 
we make sure that we do the whole consultancy. Some of the people that are launching the product, some of them they don't they're not gonna work in uh, out in the in, in in the UK or Europe. I'm gonna make an example which is very funny. Mm. So we've got a, a client that that uh, is looking to launch. It's doing extremely well in the US with all the flags, American flags. They go fantastic now an amazon account manager turns around and said i want to launch your product that's absolutely fantastic launch my flags in europe great so they come to me melanie i'm looking to launch what do you sell i sell flags right what sort of flags do you say american flags why would i want to buy an american flag i'm in england or oh, I'm in Italy, I'm in Spain, I'm in Germany. No offense, we love Americans, but we're not gonna be buying your flags unless we are Americans. And again, how many Americans are here? And that another really funny like one. like a super niche market, I have to say, yeah. Uh, ex exporting American flags over to overseas would be very difficult at this moment, or any moment, frankly. Right. Right. But even if you turned around, you're saying, okay, I'm going to make German flags and uh, Italian flags and Spanish flags and British flags. How often would anybody, anybody buy a flag in the UK in particular? It's only when we've got the, the Euro Cup. So that's about once a year where we're going to be have, or we, when we're celebrating, say, the Queen's birthday, maybe we're going to have some flags. Sure. But we, we don't just buy flags here. We're not a flag sort of like a country or, or continent unless there is a, a, a huge reason which occurs once in a while. Or you're going to be launching um, toilet paper jokes. So you've got toilet paper and you've got jokes on them. Oh, jokes? A joke toilet paper? Yeah. Wow, another super niche item. Wow. And, and right. listen, you're going to break my heart if you tell me that joke toilet paper is not a big seller. <laughs> that is, uh... I mean, it would sell. <laughs> oh, that's Compl the famous thing is it's not going to sell well. Oh, my God. But complimented with something else. <laughs> a flag, perhaps, an American flag. Right. Yeah. So but, you now we're bundling. but you can't say you're going to be selling the joke toilet paper. So these are the things that we're going to be talking about. Do you know what? Unless you've got another sort of like 30 other products or four or five other products, this is going to be just your added value item. That's great. But if this is what you want to launch only, I'll be honest with, with you. I would rather you don't pay me for compliance and I tell you the truth before you launch than you, me turning around and say, yeah, I'll get you VAT registered. Let's get VAT registered. Yeah, that's just actually actually interesting. So it's, uh, I, I generally prefer and I appreciate the fact that a service provider has the idea of saying, hey, uh, your idea is not super compatible with this particular marketplace versus take my money and then you find out the hard way, right? And so exactly. I, I like that. Yeah. Exactly. This, this is going to be a client that is going to be having so much pains. My best clients are the ones that are doing well. Yeah, they, they are my happy clients. They are doing extremely well during the Corona times. They, they, they are happy. They have launched the, the right product. But even if uh, some clients are selling, are uh, traveling um, cases during this time, even if they're not selling, I know that this is a temporal glitch. Uh, once we're over with the Corona, we are all flying all over the world. We're going to be back again buying all the traveling uh, merchandise or goods that they are selling. So it's just seriously being careful in terms of like, what is it that you are launching? When are you launching it? If you're going to be launching uh, a jackets, heavy jackets for winter, I'll tell you straight that, you know what? We're heading for summer. Maybe let's wait and launch it maybe from September onwards. But again, that's a seasonal product. It's knowing the seasons as well. And again, it's, I'm just not going to turn around and say, yes, let's get you VAT registered and let's get you launching all of Europe. Now, let's say you've uh, launched your winning products in, in Europe. So what do you do? Most of the US sellers, they come through the UK. The UK is the gateway to the European marketplace. Despite the whole Brexit that is going on, UK is still a fantastic market for those that are going to be launching. Reason, language, we are good. Even though you're going to have to change it to British English, but also you will be communicating, especially on the earlier days, you'll be communicating with people that speak the same language as you. 
but also once you once you are in the uk or once you are in europe you need to make sure that amazon at the moment they're in six countries recently launched netherlands mm. you need to make sure that you now make your products visible in the other marketplaces germany france spain italy netherlands so which means you need to do language localization launch in those countries despite the fact that you've shipped only into the uk amazon is going to is going to ship your products to each and every buyer that is buying your products. Now, if you've been to Europe, um, UK is the only one that has got uh, borders. The moment you come out of UK, you go to France, you go to Belgium, you go to Germany. It, you could just drive and drive and drive. So once your product is in Europe, it's open borders. So which means you can go to any country, even as far as Austria. As far as Sweden, Switzerland, your products could be anywhere. And those countries that I've just mentioned, they buy from the German platform. So which means your sales in Germany will definitely be probably larger than the UK. Why? Because there are these other countries that speak the language, which is German, and they buy on the, on the German platform. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, so there's a lot of opportunity in Europe. And, and what I heard you just say is that uh, despite the whole Brexit news uh, stuff, the, the reality is, especially if you're coming from uh, an English-speaking country, whether it's Canada, Australia, U.S., and you're trying to get into Europe, it makes all the sense in the world to begin in Great Britain and then use that as your staging, and then you localize to the other countries as you go, particularly Germany, which we all have a sense is a very, very strong market. And uh, you said... Uh, well, that you know, Switzerland, Austria, probably part of Czech Republic, all of those speak yeah. German on some level, and, and Poland as well, part of Belgium and Holland. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I know that they there's so much cross modulation that, um, you know, for those of us in America, we still struggle with one language that's English, and um, <laughs> you know, we've we've given a couple hundred years, and you guys over in the UK still haven't adopted some of our uh. English mannerisms. I thought we've improved it, but it's possible that you guys have just stuck with the original. Is that true? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You guys went off to America and messed it up, isn't it? How you came up with all the twins, but we, we love America. So yes, good. well, it is true. And I have to say that, you know, having sold, uh, you know, across Europe and particularly in, in Great Britain, I have struggled on the phone with customers like from Scotland. Like, I cannot understand the Scottish accent, even though they claim to be speaking English. I, I don't get it. Well, we've got a Greek at the back, and he doesn't understand, and he's been in England for more than 10 years. He still doesn't understand Scottish people. But I am lucky because I can understand all accents that are there. I'm originally from South Africa. So. Yeah, that's amazing because I really only speak English, and I still can't get the Scottish uh, accent very well. It, it takes me... A long time and they got to really slow down so all right so we've talked about the problem right people are trying to figure out what makes sense for international expansion you've given the caution of hey maybe it makes sense for the right assortment of products the right brand the right um, sales opportunity but not for everybody and that's important to you as a company and to you as a person to make sure that somebody who's going to be successful moves on then we that's talked correct. about the idea that the, the problem of tax compliance VAT compliance uh, is is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Let, let's talk about, if you will, what's the reality of Pan EU? And just because you have one VAT number, does that mean you're all done? You can just uh, you know call it a day, or what, what's the situation? Yeah. So so Pan EU has uh, a come in, and don't quote me on this, but I think we launched Pan EU back in 2016. Those were the uh, first few clients that we launched. Now, we had uh, the number two toy seller out in the US who, who is our client, and they, we, we've done uh, the test uh, with him and uh, Amazon for him to, to launch under the Pan EU program. Now, in one month, the sales were about 1.3 million, coming out from something like 300,000. For us, that was uh, the biggest, biggest achievement from a seller point of view because, you know, if your customer does well, you feel like you are doing well as well, uh, even though you're not participating in the profits, but you feel like you're doing well as well. So the Pan EU was launched and finally, I think it's become really popular 
where Amazon has uh, um, assisted sellers to launch in Europe by paying them the fee that they are supposed to be paying us to launch in Europe. So how the Pony U works, where it's different from the EFN network, which you may call that launch in the UK and then Amazon um, ships every, any, any seller that buys a product in France, they, they ship it to France. How it works is that it became the game changer of the whole system, where we saw um, a huge number of, uh, of sales increase. Now, you know, nowadays we're talking about 30%. It used to be about 110, 120% on increase on sales when this pro pro project was first launched. It was very successful, but again, still it is successful. Now, but how it works is that you need to make sure that you've got the one VAT number, whether you're going to be launching via the UK first, where you have the UK VAT number. From the UK, you will also need, if you're going to be clicking on, the, on your Amazon Seller Central, Honey you, you will need to make sure that you've got the VAT numbers for Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and also Czech Republic and Poland. Now, there are no marketplaces in those countries, but they are FCs. So, which means that because your inventory will be stored in those countries, you've got a requirement for you to have the VAT number in, that, in, in those two countries as well. So, what happens is you will still have to ship your products, say, in one country. If, let's make an example of the UK. If you ship your products into the UK, then Amazon, of course, they use their algorithm to see as to which countries your products will go more. Oh, it's obvious there is uh, Germany because it's got the neighboring countries that shop on the, on the same platform. So, which means they will put your inventory in Poland. They will put your, your inventory in Czech Republic and you will have customers in Poland and Czech Republic. So, which means if they are buying from the German platform, they don't have to take it from the German platform into Poland, but they ship it from Poland to Poland. So, which means your inventory is readily available in the country where your, where your customers are, or it's readily available in the FC in, uh, in, in Germany, which obviously it tends to be a bigger platform with the number of neighboring uh, uh, countries shopping on that platform. So you are required to have seven VAT numbers under uh, the pan eu which is an absolute uh, importance and of course once you've got the vat numbers you are required to make sure that you are compliant so that's where we come in we get your vat number and also we make sure that you are compliant we file in the countries whereby there is the the transactions that taken place from or where your clients are from or where the inventory is actually located though so we get you fully compliant in those countries Right. So just to, to, first of all, for those Americans who don't uh, appreciate the geography, just think of Europe as a bunch of states, right? And, and Amazon has FCs in California. They got them in New York, right? They, they need them to be local because Amazon is all about fast shipping, right? So the, the fastest, cheapest shipping is kind of Amazon, Amazon's uh, uh, claim to fame, right? That everybody yeah. wants prime, everybody wants it quick, and everybody wants it cheap uh, for them if they're prime it's kind of free but to amazon they yeah. want as cheap as possible so by right. moving around to poland czech republic germany france wherever they, they they decide that they want it that's the same thing that they do in america because america is quite vast and europe as a whole is 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 kind of large as well not not quite as large but large enough to 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 consider where to put inventory by various populations. So that's your impression uh, as well, right? They, they put it based on where they think you're going to sell it. That's correct. It's based where it's going to be selling. Um, if, uh, if I'm going to make an example, if you're selling um, uh, kitchen scales, uh, now chances are they will sell better in Italy. And because they cook a lot, <laughs> the Italians, they'll sell better in Italy. So the number, the majority of them, you might find that because their algorithm tells them that Italy is the biggest market for you, for you, then that's where your products are going to be located. Now, you've just mentioned something about faster delivery and prime. Uh, I've got lots of friends in, out in Germany. When they buy, the reason why they love Amazon as compared to the local platforms is because some of these local platforms, they don't 
store the they, they don't have any fcs so which means all the goods are going to be in your own warehouse or in your garage so amazon with amazon especially if you're on prom you get the product the same day you get the product the following day and they want faster delivery that's why amazon is very very popular in the in, in europe plus also one thing that you need to consider that amazon is not even in all the countries of europe They've just done only six countries at the moment. Now, the population in, uh, in, in, in Europe is uh, actually double that one of the, uh, of the US. We, I think it's about 720 million, if I'm not mistaken, uh, population-wise in Europe, the whole of Europe. Wow, that is, would be a surprise to me. I'm uh, yeah. surprised to hear that, huh? As opposed to US, I think US is 320, 325, if I'm not mistaken. So, which means, you know, if the whole e-commerce or Amazon had to open other into other countries, you would find that the sellers that are basically in the U.S. they could actually even do more. Now, what I see, and again, could be different from other people's uh, uh, situations. What I see is that usually most of the successful sellers out in the U.S. they are they do sixty percent of what they do in the U.S. on sales. Interesting. Well, I think that that's an important breakdown, right? Because Amazon is not fully, um, you know, across Europe with all, you know, FCs in every country. There are, I don't know how many countries uh, in Europe, 22 or 28, I, I don't 28. know. 28. 28, yeah. A bunch of them. And if they're kind of really only positioned today for six or, or nine of them, whatever the case may be, uh, based on logistics and so forth, over time, they're going to get there. It, it's also a truth that, there's so many different languages that that is a, a friction point of doing business, right? If you have to figure out how to provide customer service, there's probably packaging laws in various countries. All of this stuff kind of slows you down a little bit. Is that, is that true in your opinion? It, it, it does. It does. And again, that's why for me, I would say there is a bunch of us out there that provide the service you really need to ensure that you've got, you are speaking to people that, have done this for many years. Now, for us, we were one of the very first ones to launch, especially US sellers into the market. So we got used to it as far as like speaking, even to trading standards. Uh, some of the products, they require you to have uh, um, a, a European address. Now, other people are not going to be providing you that, but we can provide you with that European address. Um, translations again we can help you and okay and uh, find somebody our partners that uh, can help you with the language localization customer service you know we've got deep L if Google doesn't work right so most of the time it's typing so deep L, I would say it's more accurate if I wanted to translate any any if I didn't understand what a client has written to me but also there is more and more VAs that can actually help you with in, in those languages now one thing that I've seen I, I know we spoke about uh, the, the hurdles at, in the beginning but if you think about it lots of people they just think oh my god languages Europe German, French, Italy. So all these languages, they come to them. All of a sudden, it's red lights. That shouldn't stop you. That seriously shouldn't. Give it a try. Launch in the UK and then expand into, uh, into the other market. And I can assure you, if you're going to be launching in the UK, especially with me consulting with you, you're going to have to launch in the other marketplaces because the opportunities are endless. Especially if you're ready, your products are here in the UK. It, if I'm driving to France, it takes me six hours by driving, on road driving, right? I'm in France. I'm in Paris. So there is seriously absolutely no need for you to have your products in the UK and not listed in, in the other marketplace. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. I do like that staged approach. So as we summarize, everybody, I want to just kind of try to make sure that we put uh, uh, some lines around this thing. So first of all, uh, language, uh, although it is a point of friction, there's no getting around that, it shouldn't scare you because there are experts who deal with that. That's the point. Uh, right. Taxes, VAT, all of that stuff. Yes, it's a point of friction, but there's a solution. Melanie and Avast brings order from chaos, and that's, that's part of the point is, is let the experts handle it. And this, for the awesomers listening out there, you know, I have hundreds of hours of content out there, and I get emails all the time. I'm sorry I can't respond to all of them. 
But one of the things that people tell me all the time is they're like, hey, Steve, how do we get to know what you know? And the answer mm -hmm. is, I don't know nothing about nothing, first of all. Second, I just hire experts that know stuff. That's really what I know. I know that I should find experts in every category so that I don't have to know anything. I truly don't want to be a VAT expert. Uh, right. Thank goodness that, Melanie, that you're there because I don't want nothing to do with it, honestly. Uh, but I have something to do with it if I have businesses that, that are there, so I have to be compliant. So um, mm -hmm. take advice from me and find your experts that can help you like Melanie. Uh, and then as you – maybe it's a staged approach. You go into the UK, and then you figure out what makes sense product-wise, timing-wise, capital-wise to expand to those other countries. Is that fair to say, Melanie? That, that's correct. That's correct. One thing that I would say is that if you're going to be launching under, let's say you, you didn't just go straight into the Pan EU because there's a, obviously an expense to launch in, in Europe and also being compliant in those countries. What you could do is that if you came through the UK, there are distance selling thresholds. So which means you could sell up until 35,000 in France, 35,000 in Spain and Italy and 100,000 in Germany before you are required to register in those countries. Right. So all of a sudden, yes, you can still sell in those countries. Now, what you're going to have to do is to have a plan. You need to make sure that you pump your product so that you surpass those distance selling thresholds as soon as possible. One thing that I would say, if you were under the EFN network, you launched under, so you launched under the EFN network and you were selling in those countries. The moment you register in, in two more countries in Europe, which means you've got three VAT registration numbers, then I would say definitely look at triggering the pan-EU program because that makes now commercial, commercial sense for you to be launched in the other marketplaces. Right. Uh, well, if anybody else's head hurt once we started counting VAT numbers, then you're not alone. And Melanie is the one to help uh, kind of help guide you through that and take away the headaches. That's the point. And so for the awesomers out there listening, uh, you're going to be able to go to awesomers.com slash 187 and look at the show notes and details. We'll put some contact information there. And uh, Avask is an empowery uh, a resource, an empowery aligned resource. Am I right about that, Melanie? Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. So that's, that's good news for all the empowery members. Uh, you guys can make sure that you uh, uh, get in good with that. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, as we – are here in the middle of 2020 and we're trying to figure out what, you know, what our, our plans are. We have dealing with Corona, dealing with capital, dealing with, you know, all the global factors we deal with, which by the way, it ain't easy, but man, this is what we get paid to do. We get paid to solve problems. Now is the time to really think about, is it time to yeah. expand to Europe? And if it is, then, you know, make sure you do so with some guardrails because Melanie can yeah. help you. Any final thoughts, Melanie, any final words of wisdom? Yeah, I, I would say, especially for all the awesomers out there, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Do what you are doing. And I'm sure that some people have had some really great sales and some people low, but do not get stuck on the low end if that's where you are at the moment. And those successful entrepreneurs are the ones that have fallen down and woken up again. Those are the winners. And you need to make sure that you get up and start going again. And I would say from an expansion point of view, the the um the online or selling online is no longer going to be going away, especially during these times whereby we've seen Corona. This is the, this is going to continue. Um, I I don't like going for shopping anymore. I get everything delivered, and and, and now even my neighbour Jerry out there, I I am sure that uh, he doesn't want to go to the shops for shopping. It, it, this the, this uh, coronavirus, it's it's been. Good for for I would say for online sellers, whereby it's it has we've seen a huge shift even from our friends that were never buying online because they believe that uh, oh I want to touch and feel a product all of a sudden everybody it doesn't care about touch and feel I don't want to go out there I want to get my shopping done uh, remotely and get it delivered for me and I'll spray it and I'll bring it the parcels back in the house so I would say do what you're doing expansion into Europe is is a very very good idea especially if you're already out in the US you've got yeah. the inventory expand into Europe I love it. Well, it, it is true. Uh, it is a shift in behavior, everybody. You're in the right place at the right time. And that's the awesomers.com podcast episode. Thank you, Melanie, for joining us today. 
We really do appreciate it. Thanks to all the awesomers out there. Listen, if you haven't already gone and shared the show and, and left a five-star review, uh, I will hunt whoever leaves less than a five-star review down. Uh, <laughs> and I appreciate everybody out there. Uh, until next time, everybody, we are out. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.